everybody welcome back and welcome to a Friday edition of Q&A <laughs> with GNL all right let's uh, do what we always do it's always just too noisy in here to do question and answers while we're driving so let's find a nice spot maybe right up here here we go we'll get the old Bob shut down yeah that performance engine he has makes a little bit of noise it's hard for you guys to hear me when I'm blah 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 while driving. Ugh, there we go. Yeah, that's a nice view right there. Perfect. All right, well, how you guys doing? <laughs> well, it's been uh, almost a week since the last time we talked to you, and it's been an interesting week, hasn't it? It has. We've got uh, we got quite a bit accomplished. We did. Yep, yep. We got uh, two locations uh, documented this week. Uh, the first one was well. Okay, now we're getting way ahead of ourselves from our point of view because you guys haven't even started seeing episode one of the series that we've been creating. So um, you guys are going to see that this or tomorrow, this this Saturday. And uh, that's going to be part one of this series. Um, we're already done with the series, but we went back uh, yesterday and tried to find a back entrance into this mine. So you're going to have to stay tuned, see what we found. Uh, no spoilers. <laughs> and uh, But it, it turned out to be uh, a pretty, pretty cool mine. And then we went off to another one where we had a couple of rattlesnakes um, welcome us into their mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, you know, from time to time, you know, you, you will see one. You know, you get up at the mine, you may, you might see one at the portal, but for to see two, yeah, that was, uh, that's kind of a, like, uh oh. Well, if there's two, we might have a den in just inside of the portal. But ah, we went in anyways. The heck with it. What, what's a bunch of rattlesnakes? We ain't gonna let a bunch of rattlesnakes ruin our day, are we? No, they'll, <laughs> leave, a, they'll leave us alone as long as. Uh... We leave them alone. That's right. Yep, yep. They know. They knew we were no threat. Yeah. All right. So, let's kick. Speaking of snakes. Speaking of snakes, let me show you guys something. Do you guys remember this? Okay. Now, if you remember, last Monday I said uh, from here forward, every Monday and Friday when we do our Q and A, I'm going to be auctioning off on our eBay site some channel memorabilia. Okay, and here is the very first thing I want to auction off. Okay, now I know we've got some long term subscribers, you guys have been watching from the very beginning. So, uh, this little snake that I tugged into the mine with me for that intro sequence it has a backstory. And let me real, real quick, let me tell you what the backstory is. So, when I was first getting ready to start my channel. You know, of course, I was looking at what all the other mine explorers were doing, how they were filming, their various techniques, their dialogue, their on, on camera, and on and on and on. And I was writing all of this down, but I, what I needed to do was I, I wanted to come up with a fun intro sequence. So I got on the phone with my sister, Beth, and uh, I said, uh, Beth, uh, I need your help. You know, I, 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 need to, I need to create something and keep it cheap. And so uh, she gave me some a few ideas, and that's how I came up with uh, building my own cardboard cutout thing, where I would where I would walk in the mine, pull a string, the cardboard would fall down, and then two steps afterward. I don't know if you can see me do it in the intro. You you kind of can. You got to pay close attention, but you'll see me reach up and grab the monofilament, which was tied to the head of the snake. And as I kept walking, the snake got tugged into the mine behind me as, as I went inside. Okay, so that's, that's the backstory. And uh, this little rubber, rubber snake was in uh, every sing just about every single intro sequence for the first well I'll I'll pin it down in the paperwork but I think it was like the first year or two years of the channel 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. I, I know that, you know, one, one of you guys are going to love to have this and say, hey, that's the snake that Glide tugged into the mine, you know. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to auction this off, and it's also going to have, I bet there's a bunch of wind coming into that microphone. You know, you can keep yours open. It was just mine. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to... Uh, f uh, type out on the computer a piece of paper exp explaining the backstory of the snake and then uh and then i'm going to autograph it at the bottom and that 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 paper will come shipped with with the snake so um drop down into the description area of this video click on my ebay site hidden treasures abound the link is down in that area and uh and you can have a little piece of the channel. That'd be so super cool. Okay, number two, what else we have, Laura? We also have a picture that a subscriber um, drew uh -huh. several months ago, which is actually, it's it's very cool. Yeah. It was when I first started on the channel, so I have my original uh, setup. Uh -huh. But yeah, she drew this and sent it to Gly, and uh, we've got it sitting around the RV right now. That her name is Debbie Lee Tapp. Okay, and Debbie, thank you so much. Now, I, I wrote you an e email long ago uh, thanking you for this, but I really wanted to get it on camera. Of course, you guys know me. I'm always super busy, and uh, um, I've, been mean, I've been meaning for the longest time to, to say thank you on camera. It's, it's just fantastic. Uh, Debbie sent this out to me, guys, about the time that when I was in Arizona uh, exploring the DeSoto mine in that area, in the uh, area around Prescott, that's when I received this. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it's cool. I really like it. And you know what? We've got it uh, propped up next to our television inside the RV. It's it's there every day. So thank you so very much. Okay, guys, I think it's time for some question and answers. Now, if you haven't watched last Monday's video, okay, this is how it works. So in today's video, you drop down into the comment section, you, you ask a question, and um, then, then we're going to look at them. And then the very next video, which is in this case, is going to be this Monday, then that's where those questions and your handle or your user, user um, inf or ID, I guess you'd call it, that's where we're going to take it. So the questions that we're answering today came from last Monday. And then today's questions, we will answer a handful of those this coming Monday. And see how we're hopscotching like that? That's how it works. Okay, one more thing before you get into it. I told Laura, I said, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what the questions are. <laughs> I want it to be a complete su 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 uh, surprise because I don't want to have any prep. You know, I don't want to have a day's worth of thinking about it, etc. I just want to be caught off guard. All right, here we go. Let's have some fun here. All right, question number one that I found. Like I said, we have a lot of questions. I'm just going to go through them, choose some random ones. Mm -hmm. If you don't get chosen this week, then copy and paste and put them next week. Maybe we'll get to you. There you go. So number one for you, Gly, uh -huh. is um, the handle is uh, Wendell B 36 Okay. They said, have the mines around Virginia City been explored or is it possible? It's no longer possible. Um, all the mines around Virginia City are collapsed or sealed off. Uh, they're on private property. Even the ones that are on private property are all collapsed and sealed off. There's no way to gain entrance into the Virginia City mines any longer. However, that being said, um, Jeff Williams was up there here not too long ago. He just put out a, vid a video. Uh, him, and his, him and his wife and some friends went down into an open stope. Um, but they weren't able to go very far in it because most of it is collapsed. That was in the Virginia City area. But as far as like getting into the the major complex, the 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 the, the massive workings of Virginia City, no, no, there's no way in anymore. Um, there was back in what was it? The, it was in the early '90s or mid '90s. I when, believe it was the uh, the mid '90s. Yeah. Mid, so somewhere in the mid '90s, I'm guessing a couple guys they they did gain a, a, access through um, one of the portals. There was signage all over the place that said "Do not enter, bad air, etc." I don't know how far they got into the mine. It wasn't very, uh, but they both died. 
Yeah. They, they both succumbed to bad air. And the reason that that is is because Virginia City used so much wood in uh, square set timbering as well as uh, support stalls and everything. I mean, there is a literal forest of wood underground there. And all of that decomposition makes for massive amounts of, of, uh, of bad air. And those guys, I, I think they only went in maybe a few hundred feet and they yeah. just they just collapsed and it was after that it was body recovery so don't ever go into a virginia city mine it they are it is highly dangerous there is bad air in there and uh, right now they are attempting to uh redo the sutro tunnel that comes in from from about uh, was it two two and a half miles away or something like that yeah it might be mm -hmm. a little bit more but it's down on the uh, east side right. of the Virginia City Range. Eventually, if they drive that that that's the Sutro Tunnel back in again far enough, they may start to get into some of those workings. But I really hope those guys take care as to as as the further they go, that they start to like you know vent out the mine. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's your answer. No, you can't get in. Not anymore. All right. Question number two is uh, the handle is Mary Kunkel said hi, Gly and Laura. Because I'm a warrior. My mom does too. <laughs> I'd like to know what you do to keep yourself safe when exploring these mines. For example, in one of last week's episodes, the entrance to the mine was pretty unstable. So you were trying not to touch the ceiling as you crawled through. Yep. Do you tell someone where you are going and when you will return? I'm assu I assume there is no cell signal in most of these areas. Thanks. Okay, yes we do. Okay, so going back before, um before uh, Laura and I started exploring mines together, when I was just solo, I had a uh, a routine that I went through. So every before I before I left my RV that morning, there was a sheet of paper, and on that sheet of paper, it had all the information that search and rescue or the sheriff would ever need to find me, license plate numbers. I mean the whole the whole bit. And I would take that piece of paper and put it inside of a tub that was right next to the door of my RV. And then I would text my sister and say, okay, I'm headed out this morning. The 36-hour 30, the clock stops, starts now. She would get that text, and she would know that if she didn't hear back from me in 36 hours, that all she had to do was uh, call, call the sheriff, because I already provided her that information. She would tell the sheriff, yep, my brother hasn't uh, answered back. Go to his RV. All the information that you need to know is on that piece of paper. The sheriff would go there, open it up, they would see the coordinates where I plan on being that day, and then they would grab that piece of paper, punch the coordinates into their whatever, and head on out. Now, what I would do back then is I would lay out my yellow, uh, my yellow flag, as well as my, my flasher, in case they were running around with a helicopter. At night, they could see the flasher going off. And by the way, that information was also on the piece of paper. It said, look for the yellow flag or look for the, look for the uh, uh, um, electronic road flare. You could see it at night, okay? And uh, that's how they would locate me. These days, with Laura and I exploring together, she punches out a, a set of coordinates to her sister, yep. and it's the same 36-hour rule. So if nobody hears back, she just makes a phone call and uh, SNR or, or sheriff can do what they need to do from that point forward. And that's how they locate us. But we never, ever, ever, 99% of the time, <laughs> yesterday was an exception, but we typically don't do that. But 99% of the time, we never go to a location without someone having the 36 hour rule as well as the coordinates. All right. Another question by uh, Shockwave is, Hey guys, has Goliath ever found human remains in a mine? Also, have either of you ran into a weird or creepy person exploring a mine? No, I have never found human remains in an abandoned mine. 30 plus years of running into these holes and, and everything else I've ever explored, you would think that by now I would at least see something. Nope. Nope. Lots of animals, lots of critters but never anything human, never seen it. Um, as far as running into a, a weird person, yes, I was in, I was in California um, and I was headed out to a mine and there was a person living out there, homeless person, I mean, way in the middle of, 
well, I wouldn't say in the middle of nowhere. He 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 did have kind of a a real beat up kind of a car that he somehow managed to get out there, and the interstate was I don't know probably within four miles of that location. But yeah, I mean, as I came out, you know, he came out of his little encampment. And his body language was very strange. It, it, it was one of those situations where he was exhibiting the kind of body language was like, uh-uh, <laughs> you and I are not going to get within 100 feet of each other because you never know. You know, desperate people do desperate things. Yep. And so I just kept on buzzing by. But that was the first time I ever encountered something like that. All right. The next question is by Les, Les Bendo. I read about your bad air, air experience on Facebook, Gly. Mm -hmm. can, can Laura carry you to safety? No, no. So here's 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 how we've um, both come to an agreement, Laura, Laura and I. Okay, every single bad air fatality that we've ever read about, you guys read time and time again how one person goes into an area. Now I'm not talking just I'm not talking abandoned mines. I'm talking about any confined space scenario be it a mine be it um the the hull of a ship whatever it is okay you always read that one person went in and they passed out and then their friend comes in behind him trying to rescue them and then they pass out too so we have an understanding that if if laura hangs back and i go up into a into an area and i pass out she is not to come rescue me i i i you cannot do this 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 hobby without realizing that there is a potential that you may die. You you may not live. And I certainly don't want her to try to rescue me and, and drag out, you know, to try to drag out 230, 235 pounds of my body from one of the, she's just gonna succumb to the air too. So she we we've agreed, you just leave me there, I'm gone, you just leave the mine, go get help so that they can come in with scuba and retrieve my carcass. It sounds harsh, I know, I mean, but this is the reality of the situation. You can't go, you can't go in after your friend because you'll just get it too and then you'll be a victim. And then, you know, there you go. And then, and then SNR will show up and then they'll have two bodies to recovery. That's the bare bones of it, guys. I mean, you have to, you have to agree to these kinds of things. I mean, that's, there you go. Yeah. It's tough to talk about. But that's the truth of the matter. Yep. All right. Another question by uh, Linda Black. She said, each mine is different, but most are in the middle of nowhere. Where did these people get their supplies? Um, and how long did it take to pack it to the mines? What kind of transportation did each mine use? Pack mule? Model T truck? Mm -hmm. Well, it all depends on the time of the year or, or what what's what's the age of the mine or the age of the location in the 1800s of course everything was horse and wagon and there was and and uh, these guys would do supply runs to the various mining encampments if they were way out in the middle of nowhere and that's and that supply run would either run once a week or twice a week or if it was really really remote maybe only once a month but um and then everybody could come to the wagon and they could get what they needed you know like that that's how it was done in the 1800s. In the 1900s, well, now, now you're coming in, you know, they've got, you know, motorized vehicles, old Model Ts and things like that. Um, but uh, that that's how it was done. You had like a, um, a, a small town which had a mercantile that was somewhere in the vicinity of the district. And then they would send out either a truck or send out horse and wagon to various areas throughout the district and do these supply runs and that's how they got their that's how they got their grub and their tools and anything else they might need dynamite whatever yep all right and the final question that we have was submitted by feather catcher they said if you could explore any mine anywhere what mine would it be and why Ooh, that's a good question <laughs> that is a good question I could explore any man and anywhere. Yeah, I know the answer to that. So it's going to be uh, the one up in Alaska. And what is the name of it again? It's um. It is. It's part of the. Um, I, I believe. I believe it was part of the Kennecott. 
Yep. Mining district. Yep. Um, That's right. Off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the mine. There was a, a TV show yeah. that was made on it. I think the Edge of Alaska is what it was called. Right. So it was one of those mines that they were that they were trying to get into and reopen. Yeah, so she's right. They, they, they were planning on producing a TV show for that area, some kind of a reality show. And all the people, all the townsfolk that live in that area said, uh-uh, no way. We, we, like, we like our quiet town. We, you know, we don't want a bunch of people running around, a bunch of camp, you know, everything that comes with making a big production. So they shut it down and it never happened. Um, there's another YouTube channel out there. Uh, her channel is called Itchy Boots. She was also there on her motorcycle, and uh, the caretaker that's on that property gave her a nice tour of the area. So if you if you guys want to see what all, what the mill site looks like and, and all of the processing buildings, I mean, the place is absolutely immense. She did a fine job of running through that, that stuff with the caretaker, um, but nobody... As far as I know, because I've never seen it on YouTube, nobody has ever gotten permission to go in, to go high up on the mountain and go into the workings and document any of that. They brought all that ore down via tram, uh, but no one's ever been there. So I would love, I would love, oh gosh, that would be, so, the, the, work, the workings are absolutely immense. And speaking of that, number two on the list would be Pine Creek over in California, uh, just to the west of Bishop, the uh, the Pine Creek tungsten mine. That mine is so huge that the workers that that that, that were working the stopes they said that you could fly a light aircraft in circles inside the stopes. That's how big it is. Um, there's a video. There's an old 1950s video on YouTube. Uh, you know what? I think I will put the link to that yeah. down in the description area of this video so you guys can click on it and take a look. Uh, but um, the lower levels are, are now flooded. But get this, guys. Pine Creek was a mine in reverse. You know, most mines, they, they, they drop a shaft straight down, and then they drift out sideways, and then they stope up from each and every level. This mine is a mine in reverse. You go into the haulage at it, and then you take the lift or the, the shaft up to get into the stopes and then you, you you work the stopes and then you drop all the ore down these massive ore passes and get this guys they were dropping the ore so far from such a from such an altitude out of the stopes that the ore when it when it finally made got to the bottom of of the of the ore pass the the rock would just smash and it would actually bust the rock up in, in, into a smaller grade. It would, it would take like, what was it, like 20, 25% out of the size yeah, of the I think rock? So. Yep. Yeah, which really helped out the crushing process because just the, the, the crushing process of, of, the, of it hitting the, the bottom crushed the rock. And then after that, then they would crush it up further and, and finish processing. But the reason that I would love to go there and get into that is because can you imagine standing on the edge? And looking out into a stope that's so huge, no flashlight, no no flashlight in the world could touch the other side. That would be impressive. Well, that's it for the Is questions for this week. Yep. yep, that's it for this week, guys. Okay, so we're trying to keep the. I mean, this one's going to go a little longer because we had some more things to do. But we're trying to keep the Q and A videos in, in around 15, 20 minutes. So there you go. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming along for another. Q and A. I got to get back to the RV because I got a bunch of editing to do. Otherwise, you guys aren't going to have an episode <laughs> <laughs> for this coming Saturday. Again, guys, thank you so much, and don't forget, put a bid in on on Slithers over here. It helps out the channel. We're just going to take the money and use it for you know the thing, maybe new cameras, everything that 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 you know. It takes overhead to run a YouTube jet channel, fuel and broken parts, and on and on and on it goes. So. Hey, own a piece of the channel. Bid on a snake. See you guys on Monday. You all take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>